Hello ladies, gents, and everyone. It is Thursday, February 25th, and we're here to talk about this week's space and astronomy news. Are you sick of hearing about Percy yet? Well, I'm definitely not. So Perseverance, NASA's Mars 2020 rover, landed successfully on the surface of Mars last Thursday. This is the fifth time NASA has put a rover on the surface of Mars, and the first time that the landing itself was recorded. NASA released the video on Monday at a press conference, and you guys, it's so good. <laughs> I have definitely watched it like a million times, and I totally recommend that you check out the full thing. They also released audio from the microphone that Perseverance has, and you can hear the wind, the wind on Mars. I, I get, literally gave me chills when I listened to it. So this is just really amazing and the mission is just getting started. At Monday's conference, the JPL scientists also said that they had included a hidden message in the design of um, per Perseverance's parachute. Of course, the internet had decoded it within several hours. <laughs> Basically, the message was decoded to say, dare mighty things, which is a common motto at JPL, and also included the lat long for the JPL's offices in Pasadena, California. Something a little bit like this. So very cool. I'm sure they had a lot of fun putting those Easter eggs in. And um, of course, the design of the parachute itself, while this was a fun Easter egg, the asymmetric design is actually chosen for scientific reasons, so this wasn't totally just for fun. But what was totally just for fun and I absolutely love was they also revealed that Perseverance has a little rover family sticker on it, which I just think is adorable. Like I said, this is the fifth rover that we've landed on Mars, so they were honoring that with this little decoration on the outside of Perseverance. The SS Katherine Johnson launched on Saturday from Virginia. So this was a Northrop Grumman NG-15 cargo mission to the ISS, and it was named in honor of Katherine Johnson, who was a NASA mathematician who was known for her calculations and getting manned to the moon, um, and probably best well known, I suppose, at this point for being featured um, in the film Hidden Figures, which if you haven't seen, you should watch because it's really great. Katherine Johnson passed away a year ago yesterday at the age of 101, and of course it is also Black History Month, and so um, naming this mission Katherine Johnson in her honor was really awesome and pretty cool, I think. Earlier this month, I told you about Inspiration4, which is going to be the first all commercial crew mission to orbit at the end of this year. And not all of the seats have been assigned for the crew yet. So it's going to be a crew of four. The first seat was reserved for the CEO of Shift 4, who is the one, um, you know, kind of paying for this. <laughs> and just this week, they announced who is going to be filling the second seat, which is called the Hope Seat. And it's going to be Haley Arsenault, who's a physician assistant at the St. Jude's Hospital, as well as a pediatric cancer survivor. So very cool selection for the HOPE seat. And also the remaining two seats are still up for grabs. So the generosity seat is going to be a lottery of all the people who have donated to St. Jude's as part of this competition. That includes me, <laughs> so. <laughs> and the prosperity seat is a contest for people that are using um, the Shift4 shop. So basically setting up a shop using Shift4 and then also um, there's a social media component where people are um, kind of promoting themselves on social media and this contest is going to be selected um, just in a few days. So by the end of the month is when they plan to make these last two um, selections. So if you want to donate to St. Jude's um, and get your name in there for the generosity seat, you can. Um, also for the prosperity seat, I really support um, the space gal, Emily, and so you can check out her website if you're interested in helping her win this contest and get to space. Mm. 34 years ago, there was a supernova at the beginning of 1987, which was a very famous supernova because it was the first supernova visible to the naked eye in about four centuries, and it was called SN1987A. Now, astronomers expected that the remnant left over after the supernova would be a neutron star, but they were never able to detect this neutron star, even though they've been looking for many years. But now astronomers think that they have in fact detected low energy x-rays that are coming from a pulsar, which is a type of rotating neutron star that they think is the remnant of this supernova. This is really exciting because since we saw the supernova happen, that means that we've basically been witnessing this pulsar, pulsar since its birth. And so it's the youngest pulsar that we've ever detected. And it really is a great opportunity for us to see how pulsars form and what they look like in the very early stages of their life. So very cool detection, finally finding this neutron star after uh, basically as long as I've been alive. I'm an 87 baby. <laughs> and finally, another update on Starship, which is SpaceX's future um, vehicle that they hope to use to get to Mars. SpaceX is gearing up to do the SN10 or serial number 10 test flight for Starship. 
They did a static test fire on Tuesday, which is when they just fired the engines without actually launching the rocket. However, one of the engines was not nominal during that test, so they had to swap it out, which they did yesterday. This will delay the test somewhat. They have to do a new static test fire now, but hopefully the SN10 mission will be soon. Elon Musk has given it about a 60% chance of success. It'll be similar to the last two Starship tests, the SN8 and the SN9, which were both very successful, except that they both ended in big fireballs instead of landings. So SN10 is really hoping to nail that landing, but we'll see. So there you have it. That's it for this week. See you again next week. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye.